Before jumping right into this etude, I think it's a good idea for us to discuss articulation, since this piece is marked, marked staccato. And the performance notes on this piece talk about having your staccatos nice and short. It is true that staccato actually means detached or separated. But when you play something detached and separated at this tempo, 84 to 90, it actually necessitates that you play them really, really short and clipped. The best way to do that is to use a stop tongue technique. The stop tongue technique is pretty difficult to learn, so it's important that you isolate it. And then as you play this faster and faster, the stop tongue technique starts to become more of a bounce tongue technique. In the stop tongue technique, the reed actually stops on the reed in between notes so that your air can continue but the reed won't vibrate or make any noise. So for instance, if you want a really short note, your tongue stays off the reed for a short amount of time. Dict. Dict. For our techniques on this etude, I want to start with a simple tonguing exercise to try to get you to play with a nice stopped staccato, but we're going to do it on one note at a time. Start on your open G. Listen first. What you'll hear is five very crisp short notes. You want all five of them to start and stop with the same tongue sound and the same length of separation. This is very difficult at first, so be patient in your practice, and if you need to slow down, you can. You should practice this on each note of the scale for the etude you're about to play. So I start on A flat. What you'll notice as a clarinet player is that every note feels a little bit different, and some have more delay. If it feels like your notes are plugged up too much and the air won't go through, you're probably biting too hard. Make sure that you use good platform pressure and that your top teeth hold the mouthpiece still, but that you're not clamping any harder than is necessary. That way, when you release the tongue from the reed, the air is already there waiting to make the reed vibrate. The next thing that's difficult is going between this stop tongue technique and a bounce tongue technique. So I actually suggest that you practice both. We're gonna do the same exercise on the A flat scale, but this time I'm gonna use a bounce technique or what I call legato tonguing. next thing you can do is practice going back and forth between them. So I'll do one in the short staccato and one in the long or legato. <laughs> can continue this practice as long as you need to. The key is to listen to make sure each note has the same front and the same length. That way when you're going back and forth in your etude, you can transition more quickly. At the beginning of this etude, I suggest that you start playing a little bit louder than piano so that you're at a comfortable dynamic for articulation. For some of you that might be mezzo forte, for others it might be piano. I think as you get more comfortable with this practice, it's easier for you to start being flexible with your dynamics. Definitely tonguing short on the clarinet is easier at first at a loud dynamic. So work continually in your warm-up routine so that you can develop a decrescendo as you do the tonguing exercise we did before.
That would sound like this. Etc. Now putting the pieces together. In the first measure, I think it'd be a good idea to play almost at half tempo, so let's start there. We're going to do the first two measures into the downbeat of measure two. Actually pickups in a full measure and a downbeat. We're going to do this at half tempo and really exaggerate the crispness of our staccato and the legato of the legato. One, ready, and go. <laughs> Again. One, two, ready, go. You'll notice that the last G in measure one, I am clipping nice and short with a stop tongue technique to prepare for the detached style of the A flat on the downbeat. Remember, a note that is detached is detached on the front and the back. So that G needs to be nice and short.